Don't you hate it when you're just starting to get into the nitty gritty of your design, you're starting to set up your context drawings and you're really struggling to manually create all of your topographical maps and all of your base drawings? Now there's a new tool that helps me choose anywhere in the world. You can start with aerial imagery and go straight into creating fully functional CAD drawings or vector drawings in minutes. And today we're gonna to show you how you can do the same. So in this video, we're gonna walk you through the process of using Topo Export to create CAD drawings or vector drawings of any area in the world. So Topo Export is a great website and what it's gonna let you do is create either a really detailed 2D context drawing, or it's gonna help you get a really detailed 3D topo map, including buildings and roads and things like that. It uses really high quality and reliable open source data sets. And what this is gonna help you do is create all of your base drawings, all of your context drawings, all of your site maps, all of your base models. And it's gonna save you so much time. Seriously, if I had that during uni, I would have saved literally hours. Okay, so what you wanna do is go to topoexport.com, hit enter, and once you're in, you can see that you've got the world map and you've got this little bounding box here, which is effectively the extents of your export, gives you a dimension on the sides, which is really helpful for understanding the scale of the amount of information that you're capturing. And on the right-hand side, you can see that it gives you all of the options for your exports, whether that's 2D or 3D. And then what you can do is just zoom into the area that you'd like to make an export of. For me, it's gonna be this portion here around West Lynn and we're just going to create the export extents that we need. I always recommend going bigger rather than smaller. It's a lot easier to crop your drawings in than it is to have to re-export and then expand your drawing out again once you've done all the work. So I'd recommend going one and a half to two times bigger than what you need. I'm going to center the export window on the area that I'm interested in and as you can see the window is approximately 2.4 by 1.3 kilometers so that's a reasonable level level of size there and it's helpful to know that the amount of detail you get in your export doesn't change based on the size of your export windows. So I'm pretty happy with those extents. What I'm going to do is go ahead and have a look on the right hand side where we get our export options. Um, I'm going to be exporting DXF and I'll also do an SVG shortly but I'm just going to have everything selected. You can see some of the elements are pro feature. I actually do recommend getting pro because the building shadows, trees and green spaces as well as some of the models features are really helpful especially when you're trying to do more detailed site analysis and it's really helpful that you can do both your 2d and 3d export at once i'm going to be exporting in dxf for now because that gives me the best compatibility with rhino but you're welcome to go ifc object or stl files so what you can do once you've selected all the categories of the information that you like is just click preview and that's going to go ahead and generate your preview so you can see now the level of detail that you're getting in your export is really good it's captured all the buildings all the roads there's contours in here as well as well as the waterways and even the green spaces and you can switch to the 3d modeling as well and you can see it's given all the buildings and all the important information that you need to generate really good site plans and models and it's really simple once you're happy with all of that just click download my export and that will bring it all into a folder in your downloads so if we went back out into the main portion of topo export you can see some of the other options in svg and pdf i'm just going to do another export in SVG for using in Illustrator. PDF also works in Illustrator as does DXF, but the SVG gives me a really nicely packaged file and it just plugs in really easily. Another function of Topo Export that's really helpful is if you've already done an export and say you lose the file or you change computers or on another computer, you can just log back in, go to My Exports and it will show you all of your past exports, which you can re-download at a later date. And that is really helpful if you lose any of your content. So I'm just gonna open up the DXF file, which we just got and you can see it's come through now and the level of detail is really good the line work is great it's all closed poly lines and it's not just single individual lines the buildings have fills which is great and that's captured a great level of detail you can see it even comes through with all of the elements on their layers which is helpful to start setting up your drawing and changing the line weights and things not only do the buildings come with fills you can see it's actually even included the building shadows as line work which is really helpful if you're doing a more detailed drawing so this is turned out really good happy with that so now I've done a comparison image in SVG and loaded it up into Adobe InDesign and as you can see the level of detail is really high and the responsiveness is good so there's no redundant information in there and you can see it's even included scale bar and north point as well as some of the locality information so this is scale bar especially is really helpful for when you need to turn this into a scaled drawing you can easily use this bar to create a properly scaled architectural drawing you can see as well the building shadows are all really nice and the line work is great when 
when you do get this export, it will all be grouped together. So what I would do is start selecting everything and removing all of the grouped line work. And you might look over on the right hand side at the layers tab and think there's no layers. But if you actually explode out this info layer, you can see there are all of these sub layers in here, which is quite helpful for when you want to actually create more detailed layers. Um, so if you just start creating new layers and dragging each of these sub layers onto that new main layer, what that will do is give you an actual set of editable layers, which you can turn off and on and assign their own properties, which is really helpful. So I would recommend doing that when you start to edit up your concept drawings. So now we're going to have a look at the 3D export. So what I do is load up Rhino and I'm going to go to open, navigate to where I save that file, open the DXF file, click OK to all of these and that will bring it in. You can see it's got a nice topo surface as well as all of the buildings. Now we can change the view mode to shaded to give you a sense of the level of detail and you can see it's all come through. And if we go over to the layers tab, you can see that all of the layers have come through, which is going to give you a really good ability to set the level of detail that you're interested in. One thing to note as well is if you turn the ground plane off, there is actually a good amount of line work remaining in here, which is going to allow you to continue to add detail to your model as you need, as well as do an overlay type model drawing if that's something that you're trying to create. You can see all of the buildings are nicely closed shape and polygon, so there's going to be no issues with adding textures to any of these objects, which is great. And the level of detail on the ground as well is really good. And so one thing to note before you do your export, especially in 2D, if not for 3D as well, over on the right, you see you've got your option for contours. You can change the level of detail that you need. Some of the smaller details you do need pro again, which is why I recommend having pro because I personally would normally use probably a one meter contour. And then in 3D as well, you can also change the level of precision on your mesh. So that's the size of each mesh square. So in pro, you might like to get down to a one or two meter resolution on the DTM mesh. And you just select that that'll give you a higher quality level of the actual ground plane surface. So again, I really do recommend getting pro just to give you that extra level of detail and it will make your model have a smoother and more precise ground plane rather than being more clunky angular surface. Let's look at the difference between a 20 meter and a two meter mesh resolution. So this is the 20 meter resolution. So these squares on the top of mesh are effectively the 20 meter square. You can see the resolution is still pretty good. You're getting a nice amount of detail, perfect for all of your wider angle shots. But if you want a more detail I'd move down towards a 5 to 2 or even a 1 meter resolution on the mesh so if we have a look at that file you can see the difference is glaringly obvious straight away because the mesh is appearing almost pure black based on the number of individual mesh polygons but you can see even in the level of detail you're getting in the river and the landscape it's a lot lot better so this is something that I would seriously recommend getting pro for because you can see you're starting to pick up even little pieces of detail in the embankments here Another trick that I'm going to quickly show you is if we isolate the ground layer, you can actually generate some additional contours if you aren't happy with the detail that was added in by default. So what you can do is simply select the ground surface type contour go into the side view it's going to ask you for a contour plane base point it doesn't matter where you do as long as it's below the model and just drag up holding shift so that you get this line click again when you've come above the model it doesn't matter the size of this line at all just click ok change the distance between contours remembering that we're in millimeters so if you want a one meter contours you'll type in 1000 hit enter you've got your additional contours so if we turn that mesh off you can see it's given you another set of additional contours Thanks everyone for watching that video. If you want to check in the description, there is a discount code for premium membership at topoexport.com. I seriously recommend it. It's been a really great product to use these last few weeks and it's seriously saving some time. The quality of the output is excellent and I can't recommend it enough. So have a look in the bio and I've got a 10% off code down there for you. And if you want to check out one of my other videos, I recommend either this one up here for making your architecture portfolio or this one down here for some illustrated tips. Thanks again for watching and have a great one.